We know of two moves. We knew we know of DeAndre Swift. We know of Kevin Byard. We know the per, the positions. Obviously, we know the contracts. What do you make of it in terms of priority list? Start anywhere you want. We can go big picture or specifics on either of the guys. Getting getting each out of the way quickly is sensible because you know Byard will be able to fill the the Eddie Jackson void, and you know he is stylistically different enough from Jaquan Brisker where there'll be some comfort there uh, where, you know, Bayard still quality in coverage, even at this point in his age and the amount of snaps he's played, but he's very dependable. He'll be there on the back end. He's a, a more consistent tackler than Eddie Jackson, which obviously Matt Eberflus values a lot as a, as a defensive minded head coach. And you know, it's not a, it's not a premium position. But it, it's a position where you, you want a quality player. Now, you know, the, the Bears, the amount of money they spent at linebacker last year, you make the heads, well, all right, that's not necessarily the most premium position off-ball linebacker, and they spent a bunch of money there. But on two guys who were very productive in Matt Eberflus's defense last year, and so this is it's good money for a safety. It's good money for a starting running back. Both guys are starters. Both guys are players who, who will come in. And, you know, I'm, I'm not – I'm not certain that I, I would view Byard as a definitive upgrade over Eddie Jackson. I think stylistically, a little bit different. Like the Eddie Jackson of two years ago was going to make a Pro Bowl if he didn't get hurt and was playing at that level. Looked like one of the better safeties in football again. Last season, whatever was going on with his feet and being, uh, you know, he, he didn't, he looked more like an old Eddie Jackson as opposed to the Eddie Jackson of old by comparison to the, the 2022 season. But Byard, still a quality football player. DeAndre Swift upgrades the Bears at running back. He he is a legitimately talented playmaker with the football in his hands in space, both as a runner and as a pass receiver. And at running back, the Bears were competent, and you had kind of a few different backs you could piece together and and sort of formulate a, a quality back out of all of them with their with their various skill sets. And DeAndre Swift didn't. He isn't one of the best running backs in football, but he is one of the more gifted running backs in football, just as a playmaker with the ball in his hands. I don't love that his his frame, and he, he was like this even coming out of high school. I was talking to you a little bit before the show off the air about the, the All-American Bowl. He was a guy who played in that game before he went to Georgia. So whether it was in high school, in college, and now in the NFL, he's been similar in the way that he's a guy who could play with more force and physicality than he does. But because he's very shifty, sudden, elusive as a runner, he tends to veer more towards that, which is fine because he's really good at it. But he's not hes not somebody who's going to dominate inside the five when it's time to score a touchdown. But, hey, you got other guys who, who can still, you know, presumably do that at a high level. But he catches the ball really well out of the backfield, and he's elusive in space. So from a sheer playmaking perspective, a lot of these runs that Khalil Herbert had a really impressive 18-yard run or really impressive 23-yard run, DeAndre Swift has the potential to turn those into long touchdowns. He, he is a very sudden athlete. Yeah, that, I mean, that was all very thorough. I, I'm i surprised that polls jumped out and set the market at either position. Hmm. We did this last week. We did a polls position on free agent running backs. We did a polls position on free agent safeties. We were on it in saying that, like, I knew he was going to add a free agent mm -hmm. at both of these positions, but my stance was he needs to add a veteran free agent safety. He needs to add a veteran free agent running back, mm -hmm. but my guess was that it was going to be more of like a Thursday or a Friday thing than a Monday thing. Mm -hmm. I thought he was going to wait and basically take – whoever was left in the game of musical chairs because there were so many safeties on the market and there were so many running backs on the market that he would take a one-year deal on a veteran as opposed to, you know, DeAndre Swift. It's not a huge contract, right. but it's a over $9 million cap hit next season. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he's, a, he's probably on the team next year, right. bar barring some sort of ruptured Achilles or something like that. So it is a multi-year commitment yeah. uh, to DeAndre Swift. And Bayard, you know, I was talking about it all year on first and pod. The Eagles' defense, and specifically their pass defense, was one of the most disappointing units in the entire league this year. Now, they had a lot of problems yeah. and coordinator changes, and, you know, they, they had a lot of issues on their defense mm -hmm. and, and all of that. So, like, I would need to talk to somebody closer to the situation to know specifically 
if Bayard has lost that much of a step at 30 or what he was responsible for or what it was uh, about like the guys around him and the scheme and all that. But he wasn't good last year. Swift was. Like Swift had never been a featured back mm -hmm. before. His touchdown numbers were low because you say he's not going to be a guy who's going to crush it for you inside the five. Eagles didn't really ask him to. Mm -hmm. That was all Jalen Hurts. Like you know, they, yeah. all the, all the short yardage stuff in Philly went to the tush push and to and to Jalen yeah, I mean, Hurts. Detroit didn't ask him to either. That's just, right. that's that's never been his his thing. Right. He is one of those things he he has always seemed physically capable of, but he's frustrating. And I've talked to you know. Coaches who yeah. who've been around him at, at multiple levels of the sport too. He has consistently been a guy who is frustrating to to coaches at times because he's capable of playing with more force and doesn't doesn't finish runs with the type of power that he's capable of. And so he he may be a guy in a on a third and three that looks like maybe he can lower that shoulder yeah. to, to get you the extra yard to move the sticks. And will just kind of cruise out of bounds for some reason like that. That's been on his resume at multiple levels of the sport. When he's never and he's never played every game. You know, he's he's been a, a bumps and bruises guy for sure. Um, he signed. It's funny. He signed an identical contract basically to Tony Pollard, mm. and they kind of have a similar profile. Profile in terms mm. of what the thing that I like the most about Swift would be. He's fast uh -huh. and. He only has 593 rushing attempts in the NFL. Yeah. So this is a guy who, because he's been in shared backfield mm. situations, yeah. it's different than Josh Jacobs. Mm. It's different than Saquon Barkley. Yep. You know what I mean? Saquon Barkley has more than twice the number of carries in the NFL. He's only 27 years old. He's only two years older than him. He's got like 1,300 rushing attempts uh -huh. in his NFL career. So I, I like that he should have fresh legs. Um, and the Bears are a good run blocking offensive line and losing fields. People are saying, "Oh, they could have just paid David Montgomery." It was a different, it was a different year. Yeah, you know, right. the, the cap's gone up. They had fields. Now they don't have fields. And they did make a representative offer to David Montgomery. They didn't want to feel like they were overpaid David Montgomery yeah. at that point for what he was. David Montgomery's a better football player. Than, than any of the guys we're talking about, frankly, uh, than, than Pollard, than uh, maybe not than Jacobs, but than Swift. He, yeah, I don't think he's better than Jacobs. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, I just think Jacobs' peak has probably been yeah. a little bit higher mm -hmm. than, than, than his. But it's just uh, I am surprised that he jumped out and set the market. And so like, I think we've got like a really fair comp here who has a better year. Pollard or Swift. Hmm. I think like that's like a pretty clear uh -huh. you could choose. Uh there are reports that the Bears were in on Saquon. So it sounds like Ryan Poles was willing to go even more money uh for running back than he did. Saquon ends up choosing the Eagles offer, but the Bears apparently were one of four teams that were pretty serious on Saquon. So uh, like another sign that Poles really is it's also a win now move. Yeah, like si signing signing more playmakers. Si signing a playmaking running back in free agency on the first day of the legal tampering period. That's not the thing that a team that thinks that they're going to win seven games goes out and does. That's a, that's a that is a win now type of move while for Ryan still Bowles. being reasonable. While not now, you know yeah, you who knows? Like if he, if he comes out tomorrow and he pays T Higgins like number one receiver money, you got a bunch of your cap invested yeah. in two wide receivers. Then yeah, that's probably a little bit aggressive. But for a running back and you know, not giving him Christian McCaffrey money, but but quality money for a playmaker adding to your offense, that matters. The Bears still need more playmakers. Uh, yes, well, you know, despite the Justin Fields conversation, the football in their hands, Justin Fields and DJ Moore were the two main threats with the football in their hands that would strike fear into the opposing defense last season. They added DJ Moore to the mix, yeah. But none of the running backs really scared opponents with the football in their hands. No other wide receiver scared opponents with the football in their hands beyond DJ Moore. Cole Komet became a playmaking tight end. He's gotten much better at contested grabs and things like that. They don't necessarily have to scheme him into catches as much as they did the initial seasons of his career. But Cole Komet doesn't necessarily scare opponents with the football in his hands, even though he is a high-level tight Swift end. does? Uh, yes, I do. He's a pro bowler last year. He's very, very fast. Yeah, like some of the yards after contact numbers are just bad, like 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 you said. But so you, see, but, I didn't even know that. But, but yeah, but, man, but, that's but, what shows up but, on film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're 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 not good. But you but you think even with even with the 
I don't want to call it soft running. He, he adds juice to the Bears' offense, and that yeah, matters. He, he's more of a finesse runner than, than a power runner, which is not a bad thing in this Bears' offense. The Bears could use more explosive finesse players. and Hit and the I think hole that's and what, go. Yeah, yeah just, just go get yards. Run away from people. They didn't have any – You know, Khalil Herbert had some fun runs, some impressive runs. He can't run away from people and elude people in the way that DeAndre Swift can and always has been able to. But be prepared. There will be the frustrating moment or two where Bears fans are going to wonder, why did he cruise out of bounds instead of lowering his shoulder on somebody? Or why, when he's one-on-one -on -one in the hole, is he doing a spin move instead of just dropping the hammer on somebody? Because he's built low to the ground. He's got a powerful, compact sort of frame. You mentioned the name Saquon Barkley earlier. I mean, honestly, Saquon Barkley has just now gotten to a point in his NFL career where he's grown beyond what he was in college. Sa Saquon, is it, you know, a generational level finesse player. Like he, he's got rare traits as a runner and a pass receiver with the ball in his hands. And, and that's where Saquon, where he, he didn't get utilized as much in recent years by the giants as a pass receiver over the last couple of seasons is what he's capable of. But you mentioned Aaron Jones. Now he's, I think approaching 30. Yeah. 29. So, I mean, that's, that's the brand. Like Aaron Jones is a better football player than, um, than Deandre Swift. So, you know, who knows if the Bears were confident he was going to hit the market. That's, that, that, was, that, that, was, that, was, that was the next thing I was going to say, right? Yeah. Like, they, they trade for Ryan Bates to bring on this guy. Big says he's going to be the starting center. And then the next day, Buffalo purges all these guys from their roster. I, I'd, I'd put a pin in the Bigs thing, but I, I'd say until further notice. We can come back around to that later. All right, yeah. Um, the, the the Bills purge their roster, get rid of Mitch Moore. So they got rid of their backup center and their starting center. Some of it's cap maneuvers, but you got to at least wonder if they were willing to cut Mitch Morse, would they have just straight up cut Ryan Bates and you yeah. gave up a draft pick in, in order to inherit him? And if is Aaron Jones going to sign for less money than DeAndre Swift? I'd be surprised. But he's older. He's older. Signif but... He's significantly older. And I, yeah. On a, on a one or a two year he's deal, he's also significantly better. He's significantly better. Yeah, that, I, I'd I'd rather have Aaron Jones than DeAndre Swift, right. especially if the money is comparable. And my, I don't know, hey, it'd be it'd be an interesting research project to come up with of like guys who are cut on this day. Mm -hmm. Do they end up sign? How many guys at their position end up signing for more than them? Yeah. It wouldn't it wouldn't shock me at all if like these teams that. We're tampering. Let's be honest. Uh -huh. They didn't. All these deals didn't just get agreed upon to in an hour. Yeah. Saquon, Jacobs, Pollard, and Swift. Am I missing any running backs that have signed? Because I haven't seen an Eckler signing, and I haven't seen a Derrick Henry signing. And Derrick Henry doesn't suit how the Bears operate offense, or at least how how I would presume Shane Waldron will operate offensively. And you know, Pollard. Pollard's good. I think comparable with Swift. I think I think that's what I'm saying. I think that, yeah. I think they're I think it's a totally reasonable stance to take yeah. from Ryan Poles that you want Swift over Pollard. And I think mm -hmm. you can make a Pollard over Swift yeah. argument. I mean, Pollard had he had never had more than like 15 carries in a game exactly until until yeah. last season. So I mean that that guy has very little on his tape to mm -hmm. prove that he can be a 20 25 carry guy. But, but DeAndre Swift has a high ceiling, a higher ceiling than we've seen up to this point in his career. Last season, you could either make the case he's approaching that ceiling, or you can make the case that it was a contract year and so yeah. he played like it. And now that he's got a three year deal, maybe he takes a step back. But the Bears seem to be betting on, you know, Flus, his culture, all those things, his hits principle will be able to get the most out of DeAndre Swift. If they can, then he's going to be an exciting player because he's fun to watch with the football in his hands. Aaron Jones was so good in the playoffs. He's really good. He's, he's a very good football he's player awesome. with a lot more miles on him than yeah. DeAndre Swift. Injury issues yeah. uh, as as well. So you you don't think Bates is the starting center? I think he might be. I, I don't think Ryan Poles. I'd be surprised if Ryan Poles is betting definitively on that being his starting center. But just like we were talking about with having multiple possibilities for a stadium deal, you need to make moves along the way. You, you don't put all your eggs in any one basket. So this is center insurance for a guy who can play the position at a competent level while still leaving yourself open to the possibility of getting better. Yeah. I I don't know where they are going to add a better center based on the resources that they have. If they didn't jump out and sign one already in mm -hmm. the first four hours of the uh, legal tampering period, uh -huh. the top guys, Powers Johnson and Frazier, the kid from West Virginia, mm -hmm. 
might be first round picks, but not where they have draft picks. They don't have a second round pick yeah. right now. Bears got to get a second round pick. There's not going to be multiple centers that go in the first round of the draft. And there, there hasn't been, right? So it would be. And there won't be. Yeah. Um, so. They're good football players, but you're not going to see multiple centers go in the first round. Do you think that Powers Johnson will go in the first round? A lot of people, a lot there. of people sure. are mocking him there, like like shockingly high. Yeah, like, think, like Pittsburgh. I think at the possibilities there. They're calling him small, a loser. <laughs> you, you don't have a parents, <laughs> dork. I think the possibilities there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, I get it. I get, I get <laughs> it. They're bullying this kid. It's just it's just <laughs> not right. They're bullying him to the Steelers at twenty. But I, uh, I don't know. I mean, sure, maybe. I just. Uh, well, you just never seen, say, you said, never th- seen multiple centers going round one. I think yeah. there will be good centers available in the second round. Well, okay, so as we're doing polls, wrapping up polls position here, which we try to get inside the mind of Ryan Poles, you say he needs to get a second round pick. Yeah. It doesn't seem like that's at all possible for Justin at this point. Would you agree? Agreed. Yeah. So then the only way to get a second round pick, obviously you could trade the number one pick. Mm-hmm. You agree that's not happening? Right. You have to trade down from nine. That's it, right? That's the because they don't. It's not like they've got three third round picks or something. Crazy, right. That, crazy. That's the that's the clearest path to the, it. The yes, clearest you know. path would be to trade down from like nine to twelve, nine to fourteen, yeah. somewhere like that, and pick up some some af- extra draft capital, mm-hmm. which they obviously could do. Uh, but I think that there's a chance that if one of those receivers is there at nine, he's going to just take it and go between where he is in the third round and not have a pick for and there a would be anything wrong with it because they need playmakers. They, yeah. they, they got to have guys with juice with the ball in their hands and they don't have enough of those. And so just to get a playmaker at nine would be great. But if they trade it down and got a playmaker at 12 instead of at nine, there'll be playmakers there at 12 too. Right. I'm just, I'm just saying to, to tie it back to the center thing, mm-hmm. if they don't take – a center in the first round, which they won't, mm-hmm. or the second round, which they don't have a second round pick, and they yeah. don't have the easiest path right. to getting a second round pick. It feels less likely that a third, fourth, fifth round level prospect mm-hmm. would be the the Bears' starting center with a rookie quarterback over Ryan Bates at least early yeah. at least early in the season. Right. I mean, obviously, there is so much time between now and the regular season as well, where just signing Ryan Bates now. Ryan Pulse doesn't know who his starting offensive line is going to be. I don't think he signed Ryan Bates thinking that is definitively my starting center game one, but that option is now there. There will be other veterans cut between now and when we get to training camp in in late July and when the regular season starts in, in early September. There will be options there beyond just like this moment that we're living in right now. 